Okay, so this is a quick example of hyperbolic discounting. So over here on the left, we see our discount function, similar to those in other videos in this series, except now that this curve represents hyperbolic discounting and not exponential discounting. So it's perhaps um, a bit difficult to see the difference when you're not directly comparing them side by side, but the difference between exponential and hyperbolic is much more apparent when you're looking at um, a particular example. So over here on the right we have this um, kind of common example I've been using here where we have um, the choice of waiting for six months for um, a reward size 50, 50 pounds or 50 dollars or whatever. Or we can wait a full year and receive um, double the reward. And the curves here represent the subjective value that we have in both of these rewards at particular points in time. Now, hyperbolic discounting um, does not imply that you will always have a preference reversal, but in this particular um, setup, we've, we've arranged it so this uh, person would. So initially, if you were to uh, ask them what they prefer, they would declare, according to this prediction, that they would prefer the, the larger but later reward. Now, as time went on, if you, you can imagine kind of asking what their, their preference would be, hyperbolic discounting um, allows, it doesn't always imply there will be, but there can be a, an indifference point, a crossover point, where at this precise point in time, they will be um, ambivalent between these two options. But then if you wait another um, few kind of days or weeks and then ask them what they prefer, if they are discounting in this way, they should say, oh, I've changed my mind now. Um, I would like to go for the, the sooner, smaller reward. So this is one of the kind of key theoretical differences between hyperbolic and exponential discounting because um, when you conduct behavioral experiments you often see people have these preference reversals they exhibit this um, dynamic inconsistency now that's not to say that hyperbolic discounting always predicts a preference reversal so for example if you change the uh, discount rate of um, hyperbolic discounting, so let's say you don't discount uh, very much at all, that's shown by this very shallow discount function. What we can see is that now we, we don't have a preference reversal. We don't have an indifference point. So we can still um, observe consistent time preferences in this way. So that's a wrap up of hyperbolic discounting. It's more uh, flexible in that it can account for the behavioral data that we see um, at times where people um, exhibit preference reversals.